Okay, so I recently made a video about how to get your belts up off the ground and out of your way and how that helps with organization of your factories. And I briefly touched on these blueprints that I use to make compact sets of buildings and how I can easily move from your basic early game building into this. And I got some questions about this and that's great because I really wanted to make this video. And the reason I made that is because this game has a huge complexity hurdle, especially for newer players, right? And so this process is designed to use some basic engineering principles to manage that complexity. The basic point of this is to take complex systems and break them down into manageable, understandable modules, and then connect those modules in such a way that it's easy to understand. So what I do is I build a compact set of machines. This is a, a relatively complex module, but it's, it's understandable on its own. I build that into a compact blueprint and then I surround it with steel frames so that it becomes visually a single module that you can look at and go, that is one object doing one job and then I don't have to think about it again. I just plonk it down and then it works. And then I do that with all of my sets of machines, right? Constructors, everything. So that's how it works. You build a complex blueprint, you surround it with a frame and you make it look visually like a single building. And as a bonus, when you build the frame correctly, then it's stackable. And then that makes it even easier to expand your factory. And so by doing this, I've abstracted away some of the complexity. This is no longer a bunch of machines that I need to look at and read individually, I can read the whole lot as a group. So my mind can let that go and just focus on how to connect all the different modules together. And then once I've got those modules working in a, in a factory, I can let that go and focus on how to connect all the remote factories and so on. So the purpose of this is not to make the cleanest looking factory. The point is to optimize for my own fun, right? And that's what I'd recommend you do. Just optimize for your own fun. If you enjoy making things look super clean and you, you like spending hours doing that, great do it. I don't. Um, I like making it easy to build a functioning factory. And I hope by sharing this, that helps some other players to get further in the game than they would have otherwise by removing some of the effort. Okay, so some basic techniques for building things compact, but also I follow some rules just to make things look realistic, right? I don't clip functional parts through other things that, that look like they couldn't work. So normally when you attach a conveyor lift to an input or an output, uh, it attaches like this. It's got it's two meters wide and it has a one meter offset with this rubber cowling, which can actually change size. The animation shows you that it changes size. So it's important to remember those numbers for more advanced techniques, but right now we're just gonna cover some basic stuff where you don't really need to worry too much about it. If you want to snap uh, a splitter inside a lift, you just point at it and click. You can do it again, just remove that one, point this one in here, that's all fine. But you can also put a lift inside a splitter or a merger. Now we need to, first of all, aim it, press H to hold it. And then also we need to double check. Uh, well, we need, if we reverse it, we need to unhold it and hold it again. And then this matches this, and we're just gonna nudge it into place, click once, and then when we rotate it, we can see it snaps into place, we click, and that's now connected. Uh, the other thing you can do is you can shorten belts. Okay, so to shorten the belt, normally, they're two meters tall with two meters in between and then two meter head again. So that's six meters tall. If you wanna make a four meter tall one, you can put two splitters on top of each other, delete the bottom one. Now this one is two meters off the ground. Hold it, uh, we need to make sure it's, it's reversed correctly. Hold it, put it into place, click, and then scroll and snap. And now that is connected. And we can even just delete this. And now we have a short conveyor lift. Now the last thing, is just to, to combine these things together. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna do a, a very short stack of two splitters on top of each other. So we're gonna put the first splitter down, and let's say we wanna put the second splitter coming out uh, of the output of one of these splitters. So what we do is we get that splitter, we face the input towards the output that we wanna target, press H to hold it, move it across by three, click to place it. Then we get a lift and we put it in that new splitters input, click, bring it down and we'll just scroll to see that it snaps, click, and now that's in. And now we could use this as it is, but we can also delete this, grab another splitter, attach it here. Now when we want to attach it to the top of this lift head, we want to make sure we're not attaching it to the top of this splitter. If we do that, those won't be connected. So you actually need to make sure it snaps to the lift head. Now if I, if I pointed at the splitter on the ground and I rotate, you can see it rotates. If I scroll, it rotates. But if I point at the lift head itself and now I scroll, it doesn't rotate. That means it has snapped, okay? And now we have a compact stack of two splitters feeding into each other. Uh, and also just quickly to show you, got a merger. 
Uh, and this one, when I rotate it, even if it's snapped to the head, it will still rotate, but it will only go through three different orientations. The fourth orientation isn't available because that's an output. So that output won't face towards the output of the head because it's snapped together. And when you see that behavior, you know that it's snapped and that's got a connection. And that's basically it. That's all you need to know for this one. Uh, there's a lot more than that. I'm considering making another video just on this topic. Now, what we're gonna do is very quickly build an octo smelter. So we're gonna start by placing this one here and have it, giving it four meters from the edge. The only reason we do that is just to make the, be roughly centered. It actually doesn't matter exactly where it goes. So we put down the smelter, we have one next to it, hold it, move it across by one. And then, this is very important, we have space for a belt in between these machines. That's gonna be important for the entire design to have one belt space in between all the machines. So we've got these two machines with this gap, and then we get another smelter and we attach it right there and we move it across by two, three, sorry, three meters across. And then the input, matches up with that belt. And so we're gonna stagger these just like this. And we do the same thing with eight of them, but we'll just build one half. And then I'm actually gonna copy this half across to here and then we'll turn it into eight. Okay. So the first thing is we're gonna get a splitter and this might seem a little bit weird, but we're gonna face the input of that splitter towards the inside of the machine. Delete that splitter and then we can get this lift here, attach it to here. Uh, I am just using Mark V belts just because. Uh, I don't actually worry about optimizing exactly the right number of belts. I don't like having to worry about whether or not my belt's gonna be enough. So I just use the fastest one I've got available, usually. Sometimes for a design like this, I'd use Mark III because they're fairly cheap, doesn't matter. So we're gonna put another splitter on top. We're gonna make sure the input is facing inwards towards the middle of the machine. Hold it, move it across by three. You might recognize where this is going. We're gonna put a belt uh, lift on that. Rotate it till, it till we hear it snap. And um, we can confirm that it snaps by checking that it's actually a compact belt or a compact lift, I should say. Uh, and now we grab another splitter, face it inwards, and we check by scrolling that the input won't go in that other direction. So that means it is snapped together. And now this will face, this is the splitter that will serve all four of these belts. So we're gonna add another splitter on top here, face it that way, hold it, bring it across by three, uh, and sometimes when you're doing this, the builder won't let you because you point at that and then you point, if you point at the world and then you point inside the, the builder, it won't work. That's really annoying, but you just have to kind of wiggle around until it works. Again, bring it over. Now, this won't work. This is a little trap. You can see how this is actually snapping to this splitter because this splitter has an available output. So the way to fix that is you just occupy the output with something else briefly just temporarily, and now you can see it's actually snapping into there. And now that's definitely attached. And now we can get rid of this belt. And then we get rid of this splitter. Uh, you could leave this splitter here, it would work. I don't, I actually bring it over here. Uh, and I forget if there was a really good reason for that, but it's how I've done my designs. Anyway, uh, then we attach a splitter, we attach a lift to here, bring it down and bring it up until it's just touching the floor. Add the belt to there. And now we've got three of them connected. Now the last one, we're actually gonna put a, another lift in exactly the same spot just here. And part of the reason for doing it this way is then these belts, uh, the, these lifts look the same, right? They just visually look the same so it's easier to understand what's going on. And also with the spacings, th these Splitters are four meters wide, one meter for the spacing, and then two meters for the lift. This one has the lift, one meter for the spacing, and then we have the belt, and there's one meter for the belt's bending radius, and then it fits exactly into the splitter. Uh, so that, that spacing works out perfectly, and then we get another belt, we attach it there, and now all four of these smelters are served by this one splitter. Uh, and now we can do exactly the same thing on the other end, just slightly different. Now I will also add that I do everything with balances here, uh, just because actually in, when you're building this compact, balances are much more compact than manifolds. Manifolds just take up a bunch of space that you don't need to worry about. Uh, so in fact, it's, it's best design principle and it's better for being compact. So we place this here. Uh, this does not look like it should be lining up with the spacing for this output, but actually it will and we actually face the output of this one forward. 
Uh, now we're going to uh, snap something to here and snap it to there. Now remember, it's important that we worry about the order of operations. If we snap to there, it'll work. If we snap to here, it won't because that spacing doesn't work anymore. We snap it to there and then it does work. I would love to see a mod that, that unlocks all of that uh, somehow. I don't know how you'd do it. Uh, be maybe an extra control you need to add to the interface. I don't know. For now, we're left with having to deal with little tricks to fix that stuff. And now we're going to do the same thing on these back machines. So this one, we're going to add a lift here and we're going to actually raise it up by two. Now, the reason we're raising it up by two is so that when you look at the machine from the side, you can see the power poles, the indicator poles that, that tell you whether the machines are on or off. Uh, if you bring this down, that it obscures those and makes the, heart, the whole machine a lot harder to understand. Uh, so we add a merger on top, face it forwards, and then this next one, we actually want this to be not snapped to that output, but across by one. Whenever you're placing a, a, a lift without snapping it to something, you always need to check whether it's reversed or forward. In this case, we need it to be forward, so the output goes at the end. And then we attach that to there, attach these together. And now we've got our mergers for each of the pairs of machines, and now we need to merge them together. So to go up to this level, we're going to add another merger here and another one on top. We make sure that the output is facing the middle of the blueprint, hold it, move it across by three, delete that, add this lift, excuse me, add this lift to the input of that one, bring it down, rotate it until it snaps, get rid of that merger, add the merger back. There's a lot of adding and deleting mergers, a lot of scaffolding. I use the, the mergers and splitters as scaffolding a lot. They're very, very convenient. Uh, just snap that to the top of that, get a belt, bring it from here to here. And then we have this splitter will feed all four machines and this merger will be fed by all four machines. Very, very simple. And then we just basically mirror this on the other side. But we don't mirror it, but we copy it and we make a few minor changes. And then we connect this splitter to a middle splitter and we connect this merger to a middle merger. So we'll just quickly do that. We'll save it as temp. We can also call it a quad smelter, um, but I'm never gonna use this out in the wild, so I don't need to name it. I'm just gonna quickly grab it, temp, uh, and we'll double check the arrow for this. I always put the arrow towards the input because that's the natural starting point for each of your buildings. Uh, we're gonna just move it around until it's, yep, that's lined up. It's as close as it can get. Uh, I think that's a completely acceptable level of clipping. You might object to this clipping inside. See this, this power pole kind of comes inside a little bit. I don't think that's getting in the way of the machinery. So I think that looks fine. Plus you can't, you can't worry about every tiny little thing. Okay, so now we've got the same thing on each side. We've got that one there and then we've got the original. And now we just need to connect them. This splitter is facing this way uh, it's got it's got its input on this side. It actually needs to have it facing this splitter. So they're all they're both feeding from the same location in the middle. But I can't remove this splitter from the middle of this stack without breaking all the connections. So I actually need to delete a lot of the stack and remake it. So we can delete that lift and that belt. So we can rebuild this stack starting from this conveyor lift. And we scroll to make sure it is connected. You can see that it's it's not putting its input towards that conveyor lift, which means it is connected. And then we click. And now that's in the right spot. And now we need to go and rebuild that stack again. So we're just going to put another splitter on top, face it that way, three times across, put the lift in. We need to make sure that we occupy this output. What is happening? The belts are a bit more forgiving if you go into default mode, bendy queer mode as opposed to straight mode. It's just a bit more tolerant. Okay. We're going to grab a splitter. Um, again, we place this and if we scroll, we can see it's not rotating. That means it is connected. And now we just add the belt there. And interestingly, when I put this conveyor lift on this splitter and bring it down, you can see if I rotate it, you can hear it snaps. That beep means it has connected to that belt. Um, if you're super paranoid, you could delete and rebuild that belt very, very easily like this, like I'm about to do, but you don't need to. But that's one way that you can actually snap conveyor lifts two belts so now we've got both of these splitters facing inwards we're just going to grab another splitter uh, put it there you can see those lines actually mean that it is lined up you can see that those will line up correctly and now we'll just delete these splitters and get rid of this little temporary thing and then 
we just connect these belts. And now, this one splitter should feed all eight machines equally. And it's really cool. When you start up a machine with a balance like this, they all start more or less immediately. It's really, really cool. And also, just another quick note, using fast belts in these designs means that when you test them, the machines will start quickly, and you can verify that they work quickly. If you replace all of these with the minimum speed belt that you possibly can, then you're just making it take ages for the machine to start. And that means you have to wait longer to test that it's working. And that's just, that's just time. It's also time to check that each and every belt is correct. If you make it a fast belt, then you never have to worry about it. You just plonk it down and then it works. And if you've got Mark V belts, you should be finding a way to make aluminium, like owlclad sheeting really, really quickly and easily so that you don't have to worry about running out. Uh, and then you can just build quickly and not have to worry about it. But now we've got it over here. This merger is now facing the wrong way, so we delete it. And we also need to delete this belt. And then we can place the merger again, face it inwards, put the belt back. And now that's mirrored correctly. So then we can just put a merger in here, just stack these up until they're at the right height, delete these three, add this belt, et voila. This merger now draws from all eight machines equally. Very, very quick, very, very easy to do. So this time I've built this with a perfectly balanced output. There's no reason to do that except that it's more compact. Now that we've built the machines, now we need to add the framework and add the power lines. We're gonna grab a painted beam. Uh, to start with, I like to put these frames at the corner of these machines like this. And I like to leave the mergers and the splitters sticking out a little bit so that it's easier to connect them vertically when you stack them up. So we're just gonna put this here, press H, Hold down control, move it half a meter in each way, position it, and now for this machine, this should work with nine meters of height. Uh, you could go to 10 if you wanted a little bit of air in the machine, but I prefer to stack them really tight. Uh, also, uh, I find that the carbon steel finish works really, really well with these painted steel beams. Just makes it look all just nice. And then it merges really well with these frame floors. Uh, because they're also made of that carbon steel color. So I'm gonna nudge it and use control to half step it until it's exactly matching this beam. Now, do not leave this as it is. You can't build one of these stacked on top of one of these frame floors because these frame floors are 40 centimeters tall. And these lifts only snap to one meter increments. They work on the one meter grid. If you, if you built this and then snapped it on top of one of these frames, you would not be able to connect the splitters or the mergers vertically. The way you fix this is very, very easy. You just pick up this frame floor, build it underneath itself, bang, delete the top one, and now it's flush, and this is the top of this frame floor is now on the one meter grid. And now I find it easiest when I'm building this to build the corners first. But we're just gonna hold this one, that's the corner. The way to, to read this is you can see this has a line here, this machine, the edge of the machine has a line here, and this machine has a line here, and they intersect at this spot. So we're gonna place it there, press hold, move it in by half a meter, and then nine meters tall, and it works. And then we can hold this. That won't let it me snap any further. So we can just position that, uh, hold, and there we go. And again, carbon steel finish, very important detail. And then again, this one, uh, this is actually, this machine is right at the corner, so we can just hold it there, snap it in by half a meter each time. Oh, if I placed it like this, it's clipping in, which I don't mind it clipping in a little bit because these are non-functional parts of the machine. This part of the machine moves. This panel here that it's intersecting, that moves when the machine is moving. So I don't like to clip into it. And that's fine because we've got plenty of space. We can just move it one meter across and that'll work just fine. Whoops, so we're just gonna place that there, hold, move it across. Yep, that works. And that now that we've done that, I'm actually gonna move this one meter across as well. There we go. Bring it across. Okay. So now we've got most of the frame working. 
So I'm going to design this like this so that the overlap is in the middle there. There's lots of ways to do this, just whatever you happen to prefer. Uh, so I'm going to click that there and put that there. There's a bit of redundancy in some of this. Uh, you'll use a little bit of extra steel, but again, steel is cheap. You should be making heaps and heaps of steel. So now we've got the frame. So now we need to delve in and do all of the power connections. And if you like to make sure that your cables are not clipping through anything, you can do that. It's actually not that hard. Half a meter in. Attach it to that machine. I don't always worry about this, but it turns out that when I'm making a video for other people, I decide that I am suddenly going to care. So that, then this one attaches to that machine and to that machine. Thank you, saving lag. The saving lag is much better. I'm not sure if you've noticed, but they've improved that in this version of the game. You could worry about where those cables go. I think those cables look fine. Where is it? We're going to put one there. That'll serve that one. Where is it? Yeah, we'll put one there. And we'll put one there. And now we're just going to connect all of these. This might be a little bit excessive. Um, also, I'm using Mark 1s because the point is that this is a this is a design that you can actually make relatively early in the game. Okay. And bring this over. Oof, this is awkward moving. Yep, that looks all right. And now we just connect this one to here. And now all the machines are connected to each other. And now the last thing is I always leave an outlet here. In fact, sometimes I'll use a double outlet so I can connect from this from the inside to the outside. But in this case, because I've got an outlet here, I can just connect directly to that. And then that is my external attachment point. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the other corner. I'm gonna attach that to there. That looks fine to me. Yeah. Okay, and now we have an attachment point on the on this corner and on the opposite corner. Doesn't really matter which corner you use, but I find if I have one outlet on each opposite corner, then no matter where I am, no matter where my outlets are in the factory, I can always reach one of the outlets relatively easily. And it looks pretty neat and tidy to connect them. So that pretty much is a complete working design. And we're just quickly gonna test it. Also, when I build smelters and foundries, because there's only a few recipes, I'll actually make one blueprint for each recipe. And I will configure the whole blueprint first. And that makes it way, way easier to put these down and get them working really, really quickly and have less opportunities to, to make mistakes. Now we're gonna do, this is an Octo Smelter Brackets Iron. There we go. And in fact, so what I normally do is I grab the smelter icon and then I go to the color and I actually have, so in my normal world, I would actually have a slightly rusty colored brown. I just have a preset, hit save, I call it rust. There it is, rust. And then I know that that is the iron color. I can just see that's Octo Smelter Iron and you can see the color, very, very easy to pick out. And now we're quickly just gonna test it. So testing it is very simple. I always test all of my blueprints so that once I've built them, I know they're working and then I don't have to worry about them again. And uh, this is what this is for, for the test. So you can see all of these are yellow and all of these are yellow. Uh, you can see at least, I can see that one there. There's three that I can see are yellow. Just run around the other side and you can see, well, you can see all four yellows from this side. And then you can see this one is yellow. So you know that they're all powered on. And now we will just whack some, oh, you can see I've done this before. I don't know, we'll just whack 200 in. They're all filling up, no worries. They're all turning on. You can see a lot of green lights. Green lights, green lights, green lights. That means they're all running. Okay, this is actually a fairly beefy test. <laughs> Should be pretty quick though. There we go, we're halfway through the test. That was pretty fast. And then if we get 200 iron, then we know that all of the inputs and outputs are all working. And we should see all the machines should turn off relatively quickly compared to each other. Do, 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 where are we? Oh, that's about to happen. There we go, they all turned off at pretty much exactly the same time, just within a few seconds of each other. So that means that the input balancers are working efficiently, the outputs are working, and we've got 200 iron, which means the whole system works. That is a working, Octo smelter brackets iron. Now, there's more. So, we need to stack this. We're gonna clear the blueprint designer. We're gonna get our octo smelter iron blueprint, 
Make sure that the input is facing the same direction as it was before. We've got three meters on this side, and we'll come over here. We've got four meters on this side. Um, three meters is more than enough to make a vertical connection, so we're going to stack this. And also, if you want to copy a blueprint and see what it is, you go into dismantle mode, press R to switch to blueprint mode, and then press the sample button, and you'll get a copy of that blueprint. And now when you're building, if you're in default mode, it'll just go wherever. If you press R to go to blueprint mode, it'll snap to the bounding boxes of other blueprints. And in this case, because of the way we've built it, you can see that it snaps perfectly right on top, as long as the orientation is correct. It can be easy to accidentally stack it up in the wrong orientation. Uh, sometimes it's hard to tell if it's reversed, depending on how you've built it. In this case, it's actually pretty easy to tell, uh, but there you go. You can just stack them right on top of each other using blueprint mode. I almost didn't explain that before because I do it so instinctively I'd forgotten to explain it. That's one thing about explaining things to people. Sometimes you don't know what you know. Okay, so now this, we'll just, we'll, we'll rename this. This would be, so this is 16, which means it's a hexa, sorry, this is a hexadeca smelter, brackets iron. Am I okay with that spelling? Yes. So this is actually pretty simple, the way you make this work. In my previous world, you could see that I actually had these stacked up and I just connected them manually, but I'm, I've moved on from such uh, primitive ways. And now I am just gonna do some redundant connections. Nothing wrong with doing it that way, but you only need one vertical connection. I do too, because I'm like that. Uh, so now we're just gonna do a quick vertical connection. So we grab a splitter, face the input outwards, bring it out by that many. Unfortunately, that doesn't work. So to get this to connect, we're gonna get a conveyor pole, gonna line it up, gonna have a one meter spacing. It's in zoop mode and we bring it up here now. It's not actually on the two meter grid of this one. It's, it's one meter offset, which isn't a big deal. We're gonna make sure that there's, we bring it down here. Now that I can tell visually that there's three meters height difference between that and that. And now we're gonna snap a lift to it and it is in default mode, which means it's going forwards. So it snaps in. We can delete these using the dismantle filter so we don't accidentally delete anything else. We're gonna get a splitter, face it outwards, and attach it there. And now this part is really cool. Because of the way the spacing works, we can just get our lift, attach it completely normally here, face it inwards, attach another lift to this, bring it down, face it forwards, and that snaps perfectly. And that's it. That input is done. So you just snap that to there. That's your final output. And now we're gonna grab another Mark V belt, bring it down, face it in, attach to that, face it in. And there we go. This is now a hexadeca smelter brackets iron. And we're gonna save that blueprint, confirm. And now that we've got that, we can add another on top. This is 24. This is a Quatorvigint smelter. That's actually the name for 24, apparently. Quatorvigint. Um, I know that that's Latin, and I'm pronouncing it kind of like an Italian, uh, and I do apologize to the entire nation of Italy. Anyway, we're gonna add our new splitter up here, and we're actually gonna remove this splitter and attach everything to this one instead, because it's higher up, and I prefer to work with that. Because I'm working mostly from the roof, that's how I prefer to work. So now we're going to get our splitter, face the input outwards, get the lifts, bring it down, face it in, face it forwards, bring this one down, face it in. Oh, we can delete that now. Grab another lift, face it forwards. And now we have a single input that will serve all 24 of these machines. Now, we need to start doing some calculations. So this is a Mark V belt. These machines take 30 iron per minute. So if I press N and I type in 30 times 24, we get 720 items per minute going through this. We know that the Mark V belts can do 780 per minute, so this will work. We can service this with a single Mark V belt. If we go any bigger, we need to start using Mark VI belts or we just need to stack up the machines and have two inputs instead of one input. That's just something to think about. Oh, just quickly before we forget, attach all the power, 
Uh, if I'd tried to test this, I would have very quickly discovered that problem. And also we want to add the output here. So we're going to do exactly the same thing. And now we have a single output for all of these machines as well. Okay, and now we can quickly test this one. Try doing this. We'll just do this input directly in. Wait till it builds. Yeah, you can see that that snaps right in. Now we want the power. I've got the power. Everything lit up. And now we are going to attach one, two, three, four hundred. Everything starts. All the machines appear to be fed. Everything all turns off all at once. We've processed everything and we've got 400. So that means that whole machine is now working. So there you go. And now if we want to add even more, well, we could just stack two of them on top. In fact, we can't because this two quarter of a to smelter iron, brackets iron, sorry, that's actually too much. We'll quickly do a calculation. 30, because it's it's this is 24 plus 24 is 48. 30 times 24, 720, times 2, 1440. That is too much. Now, if we want to figure out how much we can do, with a Mark 6 belt, we can get 1200. Divide that by 30, we can do 40 machines, which means we can get rid of this Quator de Vaginta and we will do the Hexadeca. And that is 24 plus 16, which is 40. So this is exactly 1200 a minute. So we'll just get rid of this. Uh, now, this is where we need to start manually attaching uh, connections because we can't do this in the blueprint. It's too big. Actually, just quickly, I haven't tried the Mark VI blueprint designer. Oh, this would fit. You actually could build this inside a Mark VI, uh, sorry, Mark III blueprint designer. Now we just need to make this connection. You can put the input to the side or to the back, it really doesn't matter. In this particular case, I'm gonna do it this way. We'll do mark five lifts here. Put the splitter back in, I'll face it that way. And now we can do exactly the same thing we did before. We'll just put this up to the side, bring it up here, and then snap it here. And now that should be fully connected. It's that easy. Uh, and now we're just going to do Mark 6 coming out of here. We can face it that way and then do that. That should be enough. And we'll do the same thing over here. We can actually, I'll do it up top. We'll bring it out. Now you don't need to make this com compact. I prefer to, I just tend to now. It's like a habit. I build like this all the time so I don't even have to think about it. Um, and we'll bring it down and then we'll snap this in here. We could have made that a compact one, but we didn't. Really, that's totally up to me. And you can't stop me. So, bring it up here. Attach these. That needs to be a Mark VI belt. There we go. And now, we'll just do another quick test. And these are all already configured. We'll put 600 in. One, two, three, four, five, six. Wow, that's fast. All the machines are already started, except... Uh, now, I think... Yes, so they, they, there was a bit of a hiccup, but now that they're saturated, or the, the belts have put enough iron ore in, it should be working just fine. They're refilling just at the same speed as they're emptying. That's nearly done. That's also a visual representation of how fast these things are getting smelted. Uh, doop -a doo we just wait and see. And... Last ones are coming in slightly slower. We're done. 600. So that means all the inputs and all the outputs worked. This is a 40 stack of smelters that does 1200 items per minute. And again, looking at this, visually I see this as a single stack. This is a single tower because you can just look at it and go, oh yeah, that building does a thing. I know what it does. I don't need to worry about it. All I need to worry about is what's going into it and what's coming out of it and maybe what its capacity is. If you were concerned about this, you could do something like put a small billboard on the side, a Quadraginti smelter, that would be 40, but we'll just call it a 40 because I can't remember any of these names anyway. 1200 per minute. There you go. A lot of people in the last video, by the way, mentioned logistics flaws. Now for me, logistics flaws are extra effort, they obscure details, they make it harder to follow what's going on, and they make it slower to build.
So I don't like using them, but if you like using them for the cleanliness, uh, go for it. You can still build this stack and send one of these lifts down or up into a logistics floor. This is my new factory, and this is also the end of the video. Now, I didn't mind making a bit of a longer video this time because people were interested in these blueprints, and there was a bunch that I didn't cover, like a bunch more advanced compact building techniques, compact balances, as well as machines with multiple inputs, which are considerably more complicated to build, although not that difficult. Um, just a, a handful of little extra techniques that you could use to start building these for yourselves. Uh, same thing with these, with these assemblers. There's a little bit more going on with these inputs than there are with the other machines. But again, not that complicated, but I could easily make a video just covering some of these extra machines. Um, I've also just recently discovered a technique to make these long, cool, flowing train lines using beams to direct them. Uh, so that's another one that I'm interested in doing. I don't plan to make this a satisfactory channel, but as long as I've got knowledge to share and people are interested in hearing it, I may as well share it. So please let me know if you're interested in those videos and I would love to make them. This isn't just a cynical YouTube thing. It does genuinely help to know that people want to know what I will have to say. So anyway, I really hope that that helps you to really just get out there and grow your factory. The factory must grow. Humanity is counting on you. Think of the puppies.